Mountain gorilla story starts hundreds of thousands of years ago, when the volcanoes of the eastern Congo erupted. For the gorillas that lived there, it was time to flee or die. Some of them found a new home, rising high into the clouds. Freezing cold, battered daily by torrential rain, generations of gorillas had to adapt. The lowland gorillas changed. They grew larger, strong enough to climb almost 4,000 meters to the freezing summit of their new home. Their coats grew thicker, with hair up to six inches long. Deprived of lowland forest fruits, they learned how to harvest this strange world. They became the kings of the Virungas. Now, humans climb the steep slopes daily, heading towards the last survivors of the species. Each day starts with a search party. Trackers whose skills have been handed down from father to son leading researchers who follow in the footsteps of those that have come before them. At 3,000 meters, the air is so thin, it's hard to breathe. Hmm. Only by following the gorillas day after day can scientists understand their subtle slowly evolving relationships. Now you can hear that they are feeding on a bamboo shoot. You can hear this noise, crutch, crutch. Yeah, yeah. They are just in this patch of bamboo. Italian Veronica Vicellio and Rwandan Felix and Dagijimana are on the trail of Titus the male silverback, whose leadership qualities are legendary. He's 33 years old and still ruling over 25 gorillas, an impressive feat. Most silverbacks his age would have been deposed by now. He has a distinctive orange brow and he rules with a cool, calm demeanor of an elder statesman. Wise and powerful, he commands by his sheer presence. He has ten females, four males, six teenagers and four youngsters to look after. There's another big silverback in the group, Kuriyama. Titus is second in command. He's a crucial ally. Without powerful males like him, Titus could not keep his group safe from outsiders. He needs Kuriyama, but Kuriyama could be aiming for his crown. Everybody is here except Genda, uh, Kwiruka, Nziza, Fat, and, uh, and Imfuni. So. Felix and Veronica observe and record every minute of what is happening around them. <coughs> Today, they walked in on a fight between Titus and Kuriyama. We are in the middle of a fight, can be dangerous also for us. 
but uh, so it's better to keep as more aside as possible, so to leave them the space to do whatever they want to do. He's gonna eat him. He's gonna kick his ass. Recently, Felix and Veronica have been witnessing outbursts of violence between Titus and Kuriyama. And it's rippling down through the group. Everyone is becoming edgy. It's not what the researchers have come to expect from the dignified Titus. We, we always described him as a so calm and so peaceful. And now the first day that you arrive, uh, normally no, it's not so common. Veronica and Felix may be witnessing the end of the king's great reign. And if they are, all his subjects will be affected. No one has ever seen a takeover of such a large group. And the battle for his crown could cause the females to leave and send everything into chaos. If this is the final challenge, it's the end of a remarkable era. Titus's story is not just an insight into the ebb and flow of guerrilla life. It is also a key to understanding what is happening in Titus's life today. His rule has been developed over a lifetime of experiences. But to look into an animal's 30-year past, to watch the development of a character year upon year, is very rare in wildlife research. Except for here, in the Virungas. Titus is special in one other way. There has been someone watching over him since the day he was born. Veronica and Felix are the latest in a long relay of researchers that stretches back to 1967. It was from this small hut that Diane Fossey started a research program that would become one of the most detailed studies of a wild creature ever undertaken. It was the group led by Titus's parents that first allowed Diane into the gorilla's world. She became close to them, even naming them Bert and Flossie after her own uncle and aunt. Diane told the world their intimate story, teaching us that gorillas are not monsters, but social beings full of curiosity and affection. From Diane's original notes, all the way through to the computerized observations that Veronica and Felix are making today, there is a 40-year paper trail. And hidden within all this science, the story of Titus's extraordinary rise to power. Sometimes there is no film of the saga, but by piecing together moments from the record, we can reconstruct the remarkable ups and downs of Titus's life. And start to understand how the king's future may unfold. Titus's story starts in 1974, when Diane introduced a young researcher named Kelly Stewart to the gorillas. Thirty-three years later, rereading her notes,
transports Kelly back to a moment on the mountain. Uncle Bert the Silverback is within five meters of me, but obscured, hidden behind bushes. Cleo, who was Titus's sister. On that August afternoon in 1974, right. Kelly was to experience something only a handful of people have ever seen. CB, which is a chest beat. Turning over the pages of her notebook, the scientific tone is suddenly transformed. Nine minutes later, Flossie is looking up at me. At 1.11, she moves, and against her breast, I see a tiny pink ear, just for a moment, a flash of tiny hands. <laughs> I think, no, it can't be. I think I am hallucinating. Then I see the baby on her nipple. I watch for three to four minutes. Yes, Flossie has a baby! Exclamation point, exclamation point. That is how I felt. That is exactly how I felt. I see the little baby's head again. Oh my gosh, and oh my dear sweet little lordship. <laughs> I really did feel like that. It was so tiny. At the time, I was reading a book called Titus Grown. A very common phrase she used was, oh my caution, when she saw her baby. And that book was creeping into my writing. And Titus was named after Titus Grown. And there's been someone watching over Titus ever since. Thirty-three years later, the survival of his children depends upon his skills as a protector. His ability to fight off other males is the difference between life and death for infants like this. If an outsider takes over, he will kill them in order to sire his own children. A baby is very vulnerable. Clinging to its mother for the first five months, it will scarcely let go for a second. Only at two years old do they have the emotional security to start to develop the inclination and energy for mischief. Titus leads his group through his hidden world. It spans two countries, Rwanda on this side of the mountain, Democratic Republic of Congo on the other. His lifetime knowledge of the plants and the seasons are the key to his group's existence. His kingdom stretches from alpine meadows of giant lobelias down to valleys of dense bamboo. It's an isolated world, and many animals like the Virunga's golden monkeys exist nowhere else. At this time of year, Titus joins them to cash in on the bamboo's new shoots. 